Mm. And welcome back to Otaku no Video, as always. Thank you very much for joining me. Where today I'm going to give you a spoiler-free review of the Lupin the Third movie, The Castle of Cagliostro. Now, this film was released in 1979, and it was directed and partly written by Hayao Miyazaki, who'd go on to uh, direct lots of influential anime movies, Kiki's Delivery Service, um, Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away, Ponyo, the list goes on. And this is actually the first film that he directed. Now, Lupin himself is an international jewel thief with a heart of gold. Take a James Bond film and have James Bond plan a jewel heist, and that's basically what you gotta have here. Um, exotic locales, beautiful women, bad guys with guns, etc. Now, the film has a very high animation budget, but Japanese animators were still evolving their skill at this point. So while there's a lot of movement in a given shot, there's very little dynamism in terms of the shots themselves. Almost all the shots are just static shots of characters who may move around a lot within that shot. Um, but again, it's not very dynamic. As a result, the film has a steadiness to it, and the um, editing and framing of the characters makes the action crystal clear. You always know what's going on. It's never frenetic or confusing. Um, as the opening sequences and opening scenes of the film make clear, um, the animators are willing to stretch reality a little bit in terms of what the characters can get away with physically. Um, but on the other hand, oddly, it feels like the characters are very much grounded in the real world. Um, uh, it, it, it feels like a James Bond movie. In fact, um, later, uh, in more recent James Bond films, uh, are a good pattern for this, where James Bond can you know, leap between buildings and do some things that are a little over the top in the real world, um, but it's not um, absurd cartoony physics. Let's get back to the editing. Miyazaki excels at pacing here. Action sequences explode in uh, violence and action without, without ever getting at all gory. Uh, meanwhile, dialogue scenes play out in a very sedate and quiet way without ever, ever dragging or getting boring. If you've never seen a Lupin the Third movie before, you may be asking yourself, is this the one to start with? I say yes with some caveats. Uh, most Lupin stories are a little more light R, while this is more PG-13. Um, uh, other Lupin movies tend to be a little more, um, little more violent, a little more explicit in its violence, um, and Lupin tends to try to sleep with every female he meets. And Cagliostro will introduce you to the central uh, Lupin the Third cast, Lupin himself, uh, his mentor Jigen, who's a marksman, um, then there's Goemon, who's a samurai, uh, Zenigata, who is a um, uh, inspector from Interpol, who is on Lupin, uh, Lupin the Third's tail all the time. And there's even um, Fujiko, who is this on-again, off-again lover of Lupin. Now, one fun thing about this movie is that it's been referenced uh, in lots of other works. It's kind of that famous. So the climax has been referenced in everything from uh, The Great Mouse Detective to Batman the Animated Series to even Disney's Atlantis. Now, both the English and Japanese dubs do a fine job with their characters. In fact, this is one of the early English dubs that managed to really nail those characters. Speaking of audio, the music in Cagliostro is gorgeous. Feels very much like a Bond film. Sweeping strings and horns and things like that that uh, really accompany and show off the, the action and the emotions of a given scene without ever getting in the way. Um, you know, some of these movies can really lay on the music very thickly. Cagliostro has a more spare score. Uh, a lot of the sequences actually have no music whatsoever, and that's actually better. It, it gives uh, the, the scene itself time to play out. Overall, Cagliostro succeeds in every way that's important for an adventure film. Uh, it has a tight uh, plot, uh, it has a well-established set of characters, um, and it just springs this adventure story on you and follows it from plot point to plot point. Uh, again, it never, never drags, uh, it, it moves at a very nice pace. Um, certainly, some folks just aren't going to be in for this sort of international man of mystery kind of a storyline. Um, provided you're up for that kind of a thing, uh, Cagliostro certainly fits the bill.